The previous video I did in this series, which was the very first one, was all about how I went about building this aquaponic greenhouse. Now, being an aquaponic greenhouse, you know, the water is the most important part of it. And I really just glossed over that a little bit and kind of showed you here. Well, here it is. It works. There it is. Now, in this video, being an aquaponic greenhouse, I'm going to show you how it works. And one of the most important things about an aquaponic greenhouse, about how it works, is, of course, how the water circulation system is put together. So that's what we're going to cover today. So hang on here, and uh, I'll, we'll cover this in uh, great detail. Now, the way I did this, it works extremely well for me. So if this is of interest to you, follow along, and here we go. Now, walking along the basic shell of the greenhouse when I had it nearly finished, as we come around the corner here, I'll show you here from the north side where we, I still had some work to do, just basically what it looked like on the inside. It was empty, so the next task was, well, where am I going to lay things out? Where am I going to put things, and how am I going to configure this thing to be a nice little aquaponic greenhouse? Now, over in that far corner, is a low point in the greenhouse. Now that's the southeast corner of the greenhouse and that's where I decided to uh, put my pond because that was a low point and everything would have to eventually drain back to the pond so that was a good place to put the pond. Now the next thing to uh, firm up was where I was going to put the aquaponic floating raft grow beds. Well I decided to put them along the eastern and western walls and I was going to make each side, the eastern and western walls, kind of a little bit different in configuration. So for now here, we'll just talk about how I did the water, how I did the, the, the uh, watering system over on the western wall side only. So I built a set of wooden boxes and lined them with plastic. And I set them on foundations of stacked cinder blocks to hold them up. Then I built about five or six more of them and arranged them along that western wall, kind of like this. And now, here's an early picture of that monstrosity when I just barely got it finished and it was in operation. But see those pipes sticking out of the top and they're all over the place like that? Well, let's go out into the greenhouse right now as it as exists right now. And I'll explain it to you why I had to make it so funny and weird looking with all those pipes. Well, I hope you can hear me with all this uh, noise in here. There's uh, coolers running and pumps running and water splashing. But anyway, as you can see, there's two sets of pipes here on these uh, grow beds. There's this set here along here, and then there's the set back by the window. If you can see that through the tomato plants here. Now, these are the drain pipes. These are the easiest ones to talk about, first of all. So all these are is when the water level gets up so high, uh, this will drain the water out so that the the, uh, the grow beds, the floating raft grow beds, won't uh, float, you know, or won't overflow and run out of here. Now the ones on the back, those are uh, to fill it up. And that's a little more complicated. So we'll talk about that in a little more here in just a second. Okay, now here's one of those drain pipes, and as you can see, it penetrates the uh, wall here of this little wooden box. And then it comes out over here, and what I've got is a, uh, a little pipe here that's uh, easily cleaned, and it's got little holes in it, and that's to keep uh, junk from getting in and clogging up that pipe. Now the, now the problem is, is how do you get a pipe through there and keep the water sealed? Now, now a, couple, a couple ways of doing that is, Number one, you can go the easy way and go down to the store, to, uh, to your farm store, and buy one of these. Now these are called bulkhead, uh, well, it's hard. <laughs> they're bulkhead flanges or something like that. But they use these in uh, cattle uh, tanks and things like that to basically drill a hole in the tank somewhere so that uh, you can drill, drain water out of it at certain levels. And the idea is the wall of the tank goes between right here where my finger is. That's where the wall of the tank goes after you've drilled a hole through it. And then you tighten this all back up and uh, you get a compression here so that you seal it. 
Now, those are, I don't know, 10, 20 bucks a piece, something like that. Or you can do it the way I did it. Now, what I did here, because this is just a uh, plastic pipe that I bought, and there is in the center here, uh, let me take this apart, hang on. Okay, now in the center here, it's hard to do this one-handed, you can see there's just another pipe in there that fits into this. And then I bought two wooden washer, or two wooden, I bought two uh, steel washers that fit on that. And the idea is, that the plastic here you can see that we use, the plastic layer goes between these two washers, and then this goes in from the outside, and this is what's on the inside, and, and you can see right here, and that's right here where you can see that. That is that piece right there, and this is that piece on the outside. And so then what you do is you uh, put a little goop on, on there and, and tighten these up so that they squish together, and that is what makes your seal. Now something like this, all of these parts together is maybe five or six dollars or something like that. And they're easy to get. But, the, but, but these here are a stock tank. Yeah, these are stock tank. <laughs> Still can't remember the name of them. These are uh, bulkhead, stock tank bulkhead valves or bul bulkhead fittings. I think they call them stock tank bulkhead fittings or bulkhead fittings, something like that. But anyway, they have them at you know, farm stores everywhere. But anyway, so this is the way I've done all these. See, there's this one here, and there's another one here. See, there's another one over there, and you can see that's that uh, fitting back there. See it right there, there you go, right there. So anyway, that's how you do the fittings. And what you, of course, want to do is drill the location of the hole so that uh, this is where the top level where your, uh, where your uh, raft is floating, where you want it to be. See, there's another one right here. Now what we've got here is a lot of, uh, of uh, duckweed. And the fish love this. I'll just put a little duckweed in there, get rid of it. But you can see all these floating rafts are the same. Uh, this one doesn't have anything planted in it at the moment, but uh, you can see it's just floating on the water, and the water runs out here in this fitting and goes down there, just like all the other ones do. Hey, I thought I'd uh, give a little explanation of how this system works, because I know I've heard uh, some folks have tried to do something like this, and and uh, you know it's just so difficult to maintain the balance of the flows and things like that that uh, it's almost impossible. So this is a whole different set setup setup than what I've seen before. And and the whole trick to it, well, for example, what I've seen is is if you have this fender pipe right here, and usually people will uh, put some a pump, a pump on one end of that, and say it'll be uh, terminated right here. And then they'll tap off of it and use a valve or something, a valve to basically try to control how much pressure you've got. And if you have a valve here and a valve here and a valve there, the problem with that is if you turn the valve here, you're going to affect everything else because that upsets the pressure in this pipe. So in order to maintain a balance here, what you've got to do is have something that you'll have a constant pressure in this pipe no matter what you're doing out here unless you do something very extreme. So the way you do that, well, the other thing too is you don't want valves. I don't want valves because valves are another piece of uh, complication that uh, you have to tend to them and you know, you just you don't need them. What I've got here is uh, first step is how do you maintain a constant pressure in this manifold. First thing you do is you want to have the pipe level, and the pipe is essentially level. And then what you want to do is you want to have the pipe basically flow out and over here and have enough flow rate that what happens is the, the pressure in the pipe is maintained just by this pipe right here. Nothing else. In other words, what it does is it comes up and it 
flows out here. And because the, where it flows out is, is only this high, you're not going to get any more pressure than that height of water gives you. That's it. No more and no less. See, because what happens is the pressure is basically maintained by this height of water. And this is, now, that's the way it works. And so, uh, so what happens is if I raise, say I want more water in this one, uh, what I had, would do is lower this pipe down. It doesn't affect any of the others. They just do, it, it has no effect on them. So that's how it works. And uh, then to drain it out, uh, what I've got here is I put these at this, at this level here so that it'll get that high and it won't get any higher. And also, like I said before, I've got to where if you put the siphon down a little bit lower, once the siphon starts, it'll go all the way down to where the bottom of that little pipe is that you put in there. So uh, that's kind of how it works. I hope that explains it. Let me show you a couple things here. This might be interesting, might be boring, but... The flow uh, rates in these is pretty good. Now you can see there's the pipe, see there's a little bit of a, uh, of a, dra of a, a drain going down. You can see a little bit of a suction there. But that's just runoff. This thing isn't going to start siphoning because it won't go up high enough. Now this one will. You can see this one's raising up, and as soon as it gets a little higher, it's going to start siphoning down. Now the same over here. That one's not going to siphon. I don't have a I don't have a uh, hose on there. And this one here, this is not going to siphon because it's just at that it's just at that water level right there. This one does. And you can see right now that it's not all the way up here. See, it, the water level is not all the way up here. And where it is is right here at the bottom of this. Because um, that's, uh, that's how low it'll go before it breaks vacuum and stops. Now right now it's on a filling cycle. Well, it's still draining down a little bit. But what happens is as soon as this is done, you can see, you can see the water coming out of there. I don't know if you can see that very well, but what I'll do is I'll lift this up and stop it. There, see? You see the flow stop? Now, now what I'll do is I'll put this down and what will happen now is it's, it's going to be, it'll start filling and then uh, as soon as it gets up to here about, it'll, it'll force this thing to start draining again and it'll, it'll drain it all the way down to this level right here. Now this one is doing the same thing and I don't have it very deep but uh, that's what it's doing is it's, it's a fill and drain. But Anyway, so this gives you the flexibility to do a Kratky style, a fill and drain, a floating raft, or you can put a floating raft here with supports under it so that the water will go up and down underneath it, which is kind of handy for, you know, experimenting with certain kind of crops. But anyway, that's, uh, that's the setup, and that's how it works. And uh, anyway, I hope that clears it up. And uh, there's the drain line going back, and so you know, it goes down into the fish pond, and there you go. So that's the uh, the uh, watering system that I have, and that's how it works. And I've tried to keep it absolutely simple, with no valves and no pressure regulators and nothing like that. Basically, it's regulated by having enough water to run it and gravity. So that's, that's it. Okay, well that ought to have made that uh, absolutely clear. So there's enough discussion on this side. Now let's go over to the east side of the greenhouse and I'll show you how I set that up. Now that is much, much simpler. So that, that won't be very hard to explain in detail at all. So this is one of the grow beds over here on the east side of the greenhouse. And as you can see, there's a hose going in here. Now this is the only uh, hose that goes in here and fills this up. So what it does is it fills up this tank. And let me grab the uh, camera and I'll show you the rest of it here. Now as you go down here and take a look, you can see the rest of the tanks. There's two large tanks down there and this is a smaller one. But you see, there's a pipe there that goes between here and here. So what's happening is this tank that is being filled when it goes to an overflow level, it'll come in here and come out here. And the same thing with this tank. When this tank goes to an overflow level, it's got a pipe over here that's 
covered in duckweed right now, but there it is right there. See, so that that uh, drains into this tank and drains into there. And uh, so I need I need to cut the flow rate down a little bit. And this one basically comes out here and it goes around over here to that uh, pipe, you know, that white pipe there, and it drains out into the into the pond just like that large pipe does right there see that big one and this one's this little one and it uh, drains over there into the other side of the pond and that's all there is to this one now the drawback to this one is if one of those uh, drain lines gets plugged up well then the whole thing gets plugged up and you can lose a lot of water or you can over flood a lot of water so it's got you know it's got some drawbacks but the way you, you fix that is quite easy. What you got to do is just uh, kind of on a daily basis make sure that these, uh, you know, make sure that these things are clear and they're flowing through and everything's running right. And that's not too much trouble, really.